We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, often when someone passes away, we wish we could have a conversation with them and ask them, what is it like on the other side? Even if that person had a good ending, even if you had the perfect shahada right in front of you, someone who was martyred or someone who lost their life in a noble way, someone who left this world saying la ilaha illallah on the day or night of Friday, someone who just had a beautiful, perfect death and you were so sure they were in Jannah, you would long to have a conversation with them and say, what's it like over there? What can you tell us about your experience? One more apology maybe, or one more I love you, Allah knows best. But of course we know that after someone passes from this life, we send our du'as, we have our connection through sadaqa jariyah, through the continued charity, but there's no feedback. You might see a good dream, but you can't hear directly from them the perfect words that you're looking for. And I was reflecting on the community of the Prophet Sallallahu They had people that they lost before the Battle of Uhud. But the Battle of Uhud represents the first time that you had mass casualties, that you had a group of companions that were all killed at the same time. And of course, amongst them, Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We had our strength from Hamza radiallahu anhu, Mus'ab radiallahu anhu, who set the stage in Medina. I mean, this was an extremely well-respected and well-loved group of companions. And can you imagine what was going through the hearts and minds of the Muslims that were here in Medina, thinking, one more conversation. Like, I wonder what it's like. They're still receiving the ayat about shahada fresh. The Qur'an has not even been revealed in full yet to the Prophet Wasallam. What can you tell us about your experience? And subhanAllah, it's very interesting because the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ actually give us a window into the unique experience of the shuhada of Uhud after they were martyred. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the shuhada of Uhud said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or expressed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a desire to tell the companions that were still here, we're okay. Don't worry about us. Tell our relatives we are fine. That they collectively, Hamza, Mus'ab, all of them, collectively wished for an opportunity to just say, we want those that we've left behind to know that we're okay. Tell them that we're in Jannah. Tell them that we're enjoying ourselves. Tell them that we have found the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be true. Go back and tell them. And Allah Azza wa Jal sends Jibreel to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell the Sahaba, Hamza, Mus'ab, Abdullah, they want you to know that they are in Na'im, that they are in blessing right now. And there's this one conversation that the Prophet ﷺ narrates between Allah and the Shuhada of Uhud that I just found so strikingly beautiful. Because you can imagine the gathering like if Hamza could speak, because when we think of the exit of Hamza radiallahu anhu, Sayyid al-Shuhada from this world and Mus'ab radiallahu anhu from this world, it's very heartbreaking and painful, right? But if, if we could actually get a window into, into a conversation and we do have that window, what would they say? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu was asked by his students about the ayah, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ do not say of those who were martyred in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord in constant provision, in constant prosperity, in constant happiness. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was asked about this ayah, he describes a conversation that Allah had, the shuhada of Uhud, subhanAllah. So think about this gathering now. Qala radiallahu ta'ala anhu, أَرْوَاحُهُمْ فِي جَوْفِ طَيْرٍ خُضْرٍ لَهَا قَنَادِيرٌ مُعَلَّقَةٌ بِالْعَرْشِ تَسْرَحُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ شَاءَتْ ثُمَّ تَأْوِي إِلَىٰ تِلْكَ الْقَنَادِيرِ 
فَاطَّلَعَ إِلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ اتِّلَاعَ Allah, Abdullah Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says that the souls of the shuhada, the souls of the shuhada live in the bodies of green birds. Are they like the green birds that we see? No. Heavenly green birds. And they have their nests in the chandeliers that are hanging from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They eat from the fruits of Jannah whenever they want. And they come back and they nestle in those chandeliers under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah looked at them. فَطَلَعَ إِلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ Allah looked at them. Your Lord looked at them. And Allah said to them, هَلْ تَشْتَهُونَ شَيْئًا Do you want anything? Do you desire anything? I mean, you're living the life right now. Is there anything that you want? فَفَعَلَ ذَلِكَ بِهِمْ ثَلَاثْ مرات. Allah asked them this question three times, and every single time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, they didn't say anything. They said, Ya Rabb, we're, <laughs> I mean, this is the maximum. We're okay. We're living the life right now. We're living this eternal promise. So he says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw أَنَّهُمْ لَا يُتْرَكُوا مِنْ أَنْ يُسْأَلُوا Or rather, they saw that Allah was going to keep on asking them until they gave an answer. So when Allah looked at them and Allah kept on asking them, and they realized they have to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an answer, قَالُوا يَا رَبْ نُرِيدُ أَن تَرُدَّ أَرْوَاحَنَا فِي أَجْسَادِنَا حَتَّى نُقْتَلَ فِي سَبِيلِكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى They said, our Lord, we want you to put our souls back in our bodies so that we can sacrifice for you once again. SubhanAllah. You're living all of this karama, all of this nobility, all of this honor, and your Lord is showering you with mercy and blessing. Ya Allah, we want to do it for you again. We have nothing to ask of you, but the love that you are showing, the nobility, the generosity, the magnanimity, Ya Allah, if we could do it again, Put us back into the dunya and we will do it again. And the hadith ends of this conversation that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلَمَّا رَأَى أَنَّ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ حَاجَةً تُرِكُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once he saw that they weren't going to ask him for anything else, he left them back to their, to their being. The shuhada continue to enjoy this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, as Anas radiallahu anhu narrates, ما أحد يدخل الجنة يحب أن يرجع إلى الدنيا وله ما على الأرض من شيء إلا الشهيد يتمنى أن يرجع إلى الدنيا فيقتل عشر مرات لما يرى من الكرامة. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that no one enters paradise and would like to leave paradise for a moment. I mean, once you're in, you're in, right? No one enters Jannah and would like for a moment to leave Jannah except for the shaheed. There's nothing in the world that you could give to someone and say, come back out of Jannah for it, except for the shaheed. The shaheed would want to be sacrificed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 10 more times because of the magnanimity, the love, the nobility, the honor that is being bestowed upon them, what they're seeing from the karama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the Prophet sallallahu himself said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي The Prophet ﷺ said, By him in whose hand is my soul. لَوَدِدْتُ أَنِّي أُقْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أُحْيَى ثُمَّ أُقْتَلُ ثُمَّ أُحْيَى ثُمَّ أُقْتَلُ ثُمَّ أُحْيَى ثُمَّ أُقْتَلُ ثُمَّ أُحْيَى He said ﷺ, By the one in whose hand is my soul, even I, I wish I could give my life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be brought back and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> What does this have to do with anything in regards to this unique connection between the shuhada and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Other than fadl shahada other than the virtue and the nobility of shuhada. Someone asked me after this past week when we talked about Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, like what do we take when we're reading about these heroic companions? What's the quality we're trying to gain? I want you to ask yourself for a moment, why would these people want to leave the blessing of Allah for a moment, except that they love to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more than they love being pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That a connection develops, that they taste the sweetness of sacrifice, 
We're coming to the month of Dhul-Hijjah with Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Allah was commanding Ibrahim alayhi salam, next thing, next thing, maybe because of your own experience when you're given an inconvenient test, you probably imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam putting his hand, head down and grumbling. Like again? <laughs> Here we go again. Again? Now this, now that? But Ibrahim alayhi salam was the Khalil of Allah. He was the friend of God. Ibrahim alayhi salam, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلَمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When his Lord tells him to submit, he said, I submit to the Lord of the worlds. That's not a forced submission on the outside. That is with heart, with mind, with soul. I know what my Lord commands is good, and I love to submit to my Lord. I love to sacrifice for my Lord. It's not about the pain of the sacrifice, it's about the sweetness of who you are sacrificing for. The love and the sweetness that you derive from sacrificing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a very interesting contrast here. Think about this person on the day of judgment, subhanAllah, who's dragged on his face to the fire. And you thought he was a shaheed. This is the opposite contrast. It's the opposite person. It's very interesting. The Prophet ﷺ, when he mentions a person who is a alim, a, a qari of Qur'an, a reciter of Qur'an, a teacher, a person who is generous, charitable, and a person who's a martyr. And they end up being amongst the first to enter hellfire. Why? Because the one who was spreading knowledge only wanted to be acclaimed for that knowledge, respected and honored for that knowledge. The one who gave only wanted to be praised for their generosity. But this person who gave their life? I mean, are, do we become so obsessed with ourselves, so self-absorbed, that we would literally give up our lives, that there are people who would literally die so that they could be praised in a world that they can't even experience anymore. Isn't that weird? I want to go down in history this way. You're not going to be around to read those history books. I want people to say courageous. And you're not going to be around to hear them say courageous. You're not going to hear them praise your bravery. What? What are you talking about? And Allah raises that person on the Day of Judgment. You know, what did you put forth? Ya Allah, my whole life. I'm a shaheed, right? Where's my banner of shahada? I'm a shaheed, I'm a martyr, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you only did that so people would praise you for bravery and courage and say, mashallah, shaheed, a martyr. So subhanAllah, this person who wanted more for his name to live amongst dying people in this dunya, rather than his rank to be elevated amongst ever-living people in the akhirah and the hereafter, in gardens of eternity. See the difference? The shuhada, they're not worried about what's going to happen in this dunya after them. They're worried about where they're going in the akhirah. The consequence on the outside, they look like the same person. Both of them died, noble deaths, right? But the raghbah, the desire of that person for Allah versus the desire of that person for the praise of people is what separates the two. It's not the outcome, the worldly outcome. It's the internal desire. It's the drive. What's driving you? The sweetness of sacrifice. And so when we look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, dear brothers and sisters, and we look at these ahadith, what do we take from this for ourselves? Wallahi, there is nothing that you give for Allah except that on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rewarding you, not only will you say, Alhamdulillah, I gave it, but Ya Allah, I would do more. What an amazing Lord I have. What a Lord I have. SubhanAllah, there are some people on the day of judgment, Allah mentions they wish they could come back to this world. People that would say, Ya Allah, uh, take my kids, take my spouse, Take my family, take everybody, take my house. I'll come back and I'll prepare the whole dunya for you, Ya Allah, but just don't throw me in hellfire. That's not out of love of Allah, that's out of self-preservation at that point. The other person is saying, Ya Allah, for you, Ya Rabb, for you, <laughs> Ya Allah, anything. Whatever you want, whatever you are going to put me through, I'll take it so long as you raise me in rank and closeness to you. خُذْ minni hatta tarla. Take from me until you're pleased. That's the attitude of Ibrahim Islam. That's the attitude of these Salihin. That's the attitude of these righteous. And sometimes you don't get to chart that path. You know, the Sahaba were not throwing themselves into the battlefield and putting their swords down and saying, I hope I get killed. 
No, they were courageous. They won battles for a reason. They had a drive. But they had a raghba for Allah. They had this desire for God, this desire for His praise, this desire for His reward that was so undying. And essentially what it teaches us is that they understood that whatever the sacrifice is, it's worth it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I end with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was asked about why he prays until his feet swell up. Ya Rasulullah, why would you want to die in a battlefield? <laughs> what did the Prophet sallallahu say when his feet swelled up? And he worshipped so much. You already have the greatest rank. You have maqam and mahmuda. You have this promised station. Afala akunu abdan shakura. But I want to be grateful to my Lord. He loves Allah that much. He loves Allah that much. The greatest feature of the Prophet ﷺ is his love of Allah. He loves his Lord. I know Allah better than you. I love Allah more than any one of you. That's his love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so dear brothers and sisters, as Allah charts out a course for us, that's going to require sacrifice. That's going to require sometimes hardship, sometimes test. The way that you remind yourself in those tests to be patient and to strive is that on the day of judgment, this test will not only be worth it, but it will give me pleasure and I would have wanted to do more for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just the reward that Allah is giving me. It's the rila that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with me, the pleasure that Allah has with me that is most blessed. And the dua, Allahumma in kunta balafta ahadan min ibadika salihina darajatan bi bala, abalighniha bil afia. O Allah, if you have delivered these servants of yours that we talk about, the station, by great hardship, Ya Allah, de deliver us to that station with ease. But Ya Allah, be pleased with us. Ya Allah, make us amongst those that are beloved to you. Ya Allah, make us amongst those that love to please you. Ya Allah, make us amongst those that love to worship you. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to worship Him properly, to thank Him properly, to be patient for Him properly, to sacrifice for Him properly, to remember Him properly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to that which will grant us his pleasure and his paradise. Allahumma amin. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa al-muslimin. Fastaghfiru unna wa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. Allahumma akhir al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimina wa al-muslimat. Al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat. Innaka sami'un qaribun mujibu da'wat. Allahumma akhir lana wa arhamna. واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم منصر إخوان المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم منصر إخوان المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على النعماء يزيد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة